Hi, Cancer. Welcome to your reading. My name is Edgar Mendez. I'm so happy you're here. I, I'm, I'm very grateful you're here. Um, today's reading is going to be focused on what your person is regretting most. My most favorite reading is actually my favorite reading to do. Also, their feelings are actually real good as well. But this one's actually a really healing reading. I do hope you appreciate it. I also want to remind you all, don't forget to like and comment. That does help me out so greatly. And yeah, I think that's it. Oh, say hello to my baby dog. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, let's get started. <laughs> so let's see who's going to be answering. St. Germain. St. Germain, can you tell me um, what are, no, what's Cancer's person's life like right now? Can you explain to me what's Cancer's person's life like right now? Hmm. I am hearing a uh, life without you, um, but we'll see. Um, but it de some of you may be in disconnect, I, I feel. Not for everyone, but I definitely feel some of you may very well be in disconnect. But I get the feeling here that this person doesn't actually like their life without you in it. And this could very well just be you two apart. Or maybe there is... Um, you both have busy schedules and you can only come together every now and then. Um, there is this, this feeling here of knowing that they want to be together and they want to share their life with you. And not every lifetime we come for the same stuff, right? You know, I know a lot of us are trained to really believe that family and settling down is the key. The goal it is not for everyone, right? But I just get the feeling from this person, like this energy that's coming through is their goal is this. And their goal is to want that experience. And they want to have that experience of settling down and um, having a family, if that's on the table, with you. Um, and they really do want to have that with you. You know, they see you as someone who is a partner, right? Um, someone who can actually uh, balance things out. You know, if you, I, I, this happens a lot. Most people, by the way, as well, where you, you kind of have a family with someone and then one person is giving basically everything and the other one's basically doing nothing. Yeah. They see you as someone who will actually share, um, the responsibilities and they love that. Um, this is someone who's very much a lover, right? Um, but I feel like they don't like their life without you in it. So that's the feeling I'm getting immediately when it comes to, uh, what their life is like, right? Um, they definitely see the contrast between you in it and you not in it kind of thing. And this could very well be when you're just apart, by the way. So let's see what else is here for what else this person's life like. They are on the drawing board, essentially. I see, I don't know, um, it could be a paintbrush, but they're thinking about their future and that's why. Remember, I was like, why am I bringing all this up? That's the question. What What is their life like? But why am I talking about the future, right? Yeah, I understand it now, right? Um, this person's actually thinking about what they want for their future and they see you in it. You know that... Um, I don't know if something like you do in school where it's like draw yourself as an adult or draw yourself in the future. It's like, and you draw yourself, you know, I, I imagine every kid because of it's just drilled into us is drawing, um, uh, I, I don't know, like a, a family and stuff like that settling down. I'll, I'll, I imagine that's constant, but they are very much in this mode of like, what do I want for my future and who do I want it to be with? And this is someone who's landed on you and they've landed on this and they know it feels right. Like this is someone you can go ahead and make a family with anyone. You go ahead and do whatever with anyone, but it's not gonna be the same experience. Right. And very often you have one person giving nothing or very little compared to someone who's giving almost everything. And they see you as someone who can really balance them out and balance the connection and um, share that, that responsibility as well. And I'm not saying family is going to be for everyone, but you understand that, right? You know, where even just this connections with just two people, um, one person is constantly giving basically the whole thing, like, like 90%. Um, and the other one's basically get, like, just showing up, right? They see you as someone who is a hard worker, especially when it comes to love. And they love that. And they're very much all about their future right now. Uh, this is someone who is... <sighs> I think in the past, this sounds strange, so, uh, St. Germain is going back to the imagery of painting in my mind, but he's showing me though, like in the past, they kind of penciled people in and you erase it, but this time it's a paintbrush and there's no going back from that. Um, so this is someone who's very sure about you. <laughs> Sorry, it's funny. Um, they're very sure about you because they're painting that in, not penciling it in. And when you pencil it, you can totally erase it, can you not? Mm, right? Sorry. I just ate and 
I just ate apple anyway, uh, but uh, I think there's like apple piece in the back of my throat. Anyway, uh, but what else is this person's life like? That's it. Planning stages, essentially. So let's see. How do they feel now about uh, a cancer? How do they feel now about cancer? Um, they find you very loving. Um, they find you very caring. I do feel this is someone who I don't know if they, they didn't have this. I, I'm not sure. It, it didn't come in like exactly like that, but... I get to feel like this person's childhood wasn't as su emotionally supportive as they would have appreciated. And a lot I know a lot of us have a real difficult time with that one, but in reality, we all pick our families. Like we all know that was happening with them, right? And that's actually why we picked them. And I know that that it was crazy to think at times, but it's the truth. And but this is someone who looks back at their own childhood experience and they wish that they had um a more solid foundation um especially to do with the home life and this is someone who sees you as someone who can be that solid foundation and um who, who can who's a really good counterpart i don't know what energy they bring in but they see you as someone who's very nurturing very caring um uh very ooh, mm. you know when like someone treats like you know you're you're like you know you just scrape and they like treat the, the you know, the wound, the boo-boo or um, someone who may cook or something. Uh, that's that kind of energy that they feel you bring and they feel like they bring in the opposite. And I, and I can say the opposite, opposite, but they see themselves as more of like having fun, but emotionally uh, supportive as well. I hope that makes sense. It, it is what it is. This is someone where I feel they, they feel like you're just that natural counterpart and you can make a really solid family and have kids that grow up in a really emotionally stable family, right? And the, remember this, everyone, I know it's going to be crazy, but the kids that pick like you two, if you were to come together, would pick a, would pick a life where they wanted that as, as a childhood. And I know it's crazy when we look back at our childhoods, don't think I don't, don't, think I don't know that, Um I think I don't know that, but I, it's, it's crazy to think, but that is the truth. Everything's with purpose. But again, this is someone who sees you as someone who's able, um, to f help them form that solid foundation. Um, let's see how else they feel about cancer. <sighs> Deep love here for you. Um, you, I don't know, this sounds strange to say, but they feel like you'll never let them down. Um, and that you'll never, you'll always be there if they needed it as well. Anyway, that's beautiful. Beautiful stuff. Anyway, is there any last thing, St. Germain, that you want to bring forward for how this person currently feels about uh, cancer? No, but he is moving to the regrets, by the way. This person is actually quite broken. Um, I don't know if it's coming from their childhood experience. It's not clear to me from St. Germain. So I think that it's many things from this person's past um, that have actually broke them. And there is this really beautiful um, inner child that they have. And all of our inner childs are actually very beautiful, right? But how do we get back there? Through healing, that's the point, right? But this is someone where they're very shattered and fractured and um, very much distorted. However, there is this beautiful idealistic part of themselves that does shine and understand that that is possible, which is exactly why they're painting a, a future with you, which is interesting. However, um, a lot of this person, uh, a lot of what this person's holding is a bunch of damage, and that damage often comes to the surface, and it kind of characterizes itself as distortions, probably things that you would actually find appalling or... Um, find like very negative, you know, some people just be negative. Uh, they're constantly bringing negativity or um, chaos into your, into one's life. But I see this person, especially as someone who's been through a lot of trauma and they've kind of not dealt with that. Um, but that, again, that inner child does shine through, but their regret is to be so broken. I do feel um, one of the biggest reasons why this person allowed themselves to be broken, and that is a choice that we all make, do we not, right? Um, when we let that happen, when we let us ourselves be defeated, is that they didn't think what they thought what they hoped was out there was even out there. And then they met you and realized it was here this whole time. And now they're shocked that they are in this current state. It's a strange thing to say, but I want to reiterate that for one more time. This person didn't believe that this beautiful experience that they were searching was literally out there, AKA you. Um, and then they went through a bunch of heartache 
and then they let themselves get broken. They like they literally. I think this person snapped. That's how I see it. But uh, they they did that because they're like, well, what's the point? There's no hope. There, what I want isn't doesn't exist. This is all that love is. And I've even learned this from my childhood experience with my parents. Their dynamic was it was crazy terrible too, right? You know that's just how love is. I saw it's the only way I've ever seen it. So you have someone here who's looking at this their life, right? And looking at life itself and thinking it's all tragedies everywhere. What I seek does not exist. They let themselves get broken as a result of that because they gave up on hope. And then they met you to find out, oh, holy crap. It is, it, it, it's real. It, the, it was real this whole time. Yeah, real crazy. And now they're too broken to pursue you and be with you the way that they want. It's very interesting. Very crazy, by the way. This person, real crazy broken. But, um... How this brokenness uh, rises to the surface is anyone's guess. I don't know. Um, people have different ways of expressing it. Some people have anger issues. Some people can be um, all about the me. Uh, some people can be, I don't know, um, always crying, emotionally blocked. Who knows, right? It, it, it's, just, it's crazy how that happens. But um, you have someone here who's very much um, regretting letting themselves lose hope that you didn't exist and it's sad it hurts it hurts a, a, a lot and the solar plexus especially but also the roots and they have everything they were looking for right in front of them but they they let themselves be in a sense kind of corrupted right um broken uh by life and now they don't know how to get back to that so this is actually this person's journey um, it's a real beautiful journey that they have to take, by the way, but it's beautiful. I know that we, it sounds so crazy. Why would we come here to take journeys as such, right? Um, but we do, and, and we uh, we constantly do, by the way, as well. It's real lovely, but this is someone who needs to learn how to get back to that. It does come out, though. It doesn't, and it'll help them make sense. Like, it comes out at times, and um, it's beautiful. I think you would have seen it, by the way. Um, however, mm -hmm. Um, it, it's, it only, it only peeks its head out like a groundhog day, like boom, boom, you know, they, I don't know if we're, yeah, isn't that, I, sorry, I just saw Diglett, the Pokemon, but yeah, groundhog, the, the groundhog, right, where it pops up, looks around, and then it goes back in, yeah, it comes out every now and then, it's just like a little peekaboo, um, however, it does, um, mostly stay inside, um, and until this person heals and releases all that stuff, that tragedy, right, they're not going to have that coming out often, and more consistently. All right. Um, what other regrets do they have um, towards cancer? I do feel this person has an inability to be more emotionally available to you. They may be emotional. Um, they may be emotionally available to other people, but they have not been able to do that to you. The reason for this is a fear component about showing you what's in them. Um, I hope that makes sense. Okay. It sounds strange. I have to give it like this, though. So St. Germain is showing me it's like a flasher. You know, a flasher just, you know, there's nothing like, whoa, look at this. This is just the raw me, right? You know, the no clothes on underneath these, you know, <laughs> underneath this, right? This is someone who wants to do this to you, right? They want to flash you um, and show you all their cuts and boo-boos and wounds. And they want to see what you think about it. But they're so scared that you're going to reject them. They're so scared that you're going to um, be shocked. Like, oh, my God, and run away. Yeah, they're real scared about that. So this person's actually been really, really, really holding themselves tight, you know, tying up that jacket, making sure it doesn't, you know, open up, making sure that they don't expose anything they're not ready to. And they seem to not be ready to expose a lot, by the way. So you have someone in here very broken, very um, shattered, um, tattered, right? Shattered, tattered, right? And um, they're too scared to let you see that. So they're trying to hide that while simultaneously wishing that they can just show you. So their biggest regret is to not be more emotionally available and vulnerable with you as well. Um, oh, they really want that. It's a, it's a deep desire for them. They have a, a fear of rejection, though, when it comes to that. Like They think you're truly going to run in horror. Um, I'm not sure about that, but they, they have that fear that you're going to end up doing that. And it makes this person really... It's not queasy, but... Hmm. It makes this person really uneasy. Yeah, that's there is a word, right? Um, about doing this and being more vulnerable. So let's see what else. Um, what else does this person um, regret when it comes to cancer or just in general? They have a, a negative mindset. It's deep. Um, it's really difficult. I think they let it in. Um, and that's actually normally the case. I know it's craziness to think like we allow stuff to come in, but we are sovereign, right? You know, our, our energy is 
our sacred space. So if something comes into us, we let it. And this is someone who let a negative pattern, a negative spiral enter them, and they never got rid of it. So they have a really pessimistic, um, it's not perception, they have a very pessimistic um, uh, negative pattern in, this, in their thought patterns that constantly is telling them that nothing's going to work out for them, that you don't love them, you won't love them, right? They're so broken. I, I don't know. They're not worth it. They have bad self-worth issues. So they have this voice, essentially, in their head. Um, I think it may come from the mother, but it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be the mom. But it feels like it comes from someone um, that this person, they got them young. That's what it feels like to me. <laughs> uh, but they let it in. And it kind of takes over at times. And, but that negative, the negativity that they, that they engage with, right, that they allow right, um, to take root residence inside of them, basically is taking um, up space in their head and not paying rent, you know what I mean, like that. Uh, they allow that negativity to kind of uh, keep them from doing the things that they feel in their heart they should do. So their biggest regret is to kind of let, um, let themselves cower away and never be courageous enough to be more vulnerable and um, emotionally open with you. I, I don't see this person looking for like a handout or looking for you to heal them. I don't see it that way. I don't think they do either. What this person is looking to do is, is, is they just want you to know the truth and they can't tell you. It's sad, uh, but it's it's the fear got them good, all right? Um, is there anything about maybe this person's next move towards cancer right now or anything like that? They are going to work on themselves, and this person is going to try to heal themselves. That seems to be this person's priority and where, they, where um, they're going to put their focus for now, all right? So I'm going to leave it there, Cancer. I want to thank you for being here. Your video is really interesting. Uh, please don't forget to like and comment, and I want to remind you all I love you all, and take care. Bye.